I wanted to give an update on the state of gizmos in the system. Gizmos are these little uh, arrows where you can grab things and push pull them to move. Um, I The gizmo system is still raw, but it's starting to get a little bit polished. And so I wanted to walk through my philosophy uh, on how I'm doing this. So like Blender, there are going to be gizmos that you can interact with with a mouse, for example, the XYZ axes, as well as X, hitting the X key, hitting the Y key, hitting the Z key. And that allows you to um, not have to find these very tiny targets with your mouse and you can be a bit more efficient um, if you uh, once you learn the key bindings, which are always down here in the left-hand corner. Um, so for example, shift Z will move things on the Z plane. Um, the first gizmo I wanna walk through today is the extrude gizmo. Um, the extrude gizmo uh, allows you to select on a region. It, in this case, it's a planar region, but it doesn't need to be a planar region. And then you can pull things and give them volume. Now you can pull above and below, uh, as well as give things a sort of uh, angle or slope, as well as give things like a thickness. Um, next is the fillet gizmo, which when you select an edge or multiple edges, uh, you can fill it uh, quite easily like that. And uh, the fillet gizmo also has a variable fillet option um, by hitting A, you can add these fillet points. Next, I want to talk about push and pull. If you have a solid like this, you can click on any of its faces and sort of move them in the direction of their normals. Um, and depending on the kind of object, a kind of face, for example, here it's like a cylindrical face, expands in every side in the direction of its normals. One thing I'm experimenting with, the push-pull gizmo has an ang a draft angle feature. So that's this white circle. And so if you hit the A key or use the white circle, it'll rotate all the adjacent uh, faces to the face that you're push-pulling. Um, this doesn't work in all cases, but like if you have simple planar and cylindrical faces, for example, uh, it works quite well, and it's almost like working with polygons. It's analogous to like scaling a face in polygons, um, but it works with curved surfaces in a more elegant way. So next, I want to talk about the scale gizmo. The scale gizmo is very influenced by uh, by Blender. Um, there's X, Y, and Z scales. Um, I'm uh, taking a slightly different approach um, to, uh, to scaling than uh, Blender, or at least I'm taking a slightly different approach to gizmo interaction than Blender. For example, like the scale gizmo stays alive and allows you to make a series of changes um, that you can commit by hitting the right mouse button. Um, or clicking away with the left mouse button. Uh, it's slightly different than, oops, that's a bit slow. Um, I'm using the development build, which is uh, one third as fast as the normal build. Um, anyway, the uh, scale rotate also quite similar to how it works in Blender. Um, move, we've already seen it, uh, move, rotate, scale. Okay, so that those are taken care of. The next thing I wanna show is Booleans. Booleans are influenced by Shaper, Fusion 360, uh, and as well as box cutter. So for example, if you create a box on the, on the construction plane, um, it uh, creates a separate body. And if the box, overlaps with other bodies, it still creates a separate body. So this is slightly unlike fusion. But if you have an object selected, 
and then you create a box, it will automatically invoke the Boolean command. Um, this is a bit like how the way box cutter works. It defaults to difference, but using the keyboard, you can switch to union, back to difference, intersect, uh, or hitting R for new body. Analogously, the extrude command uh, will do Boolean. So in this case, I just made a little pen pentagon on this surface. And if I select it and I extrude it, it's a new body. But if I select it and have another body that it overlaps with selected, it automatically becomes a Boolean operation. And so this allows me to also like adjust angles and stuff like that. So if I commit, um, you can see the cut we just made there. So this applies with all extrudes and all primitives. I mean, I don't know that this is particularly useful, but if I have if I have this sphere selected and I make like another sphere, uh, it creates this sort of Boolean cut. And uh, yeah, I don't know, it seems, seems useful. Um, yeah, so for example, I don't know, let's keep this selected. Is this gonna crash? Let's hope not. Uh, I'm gonna make a cylinder. Uh, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> um, performance is definitely not optimal, but boosh. Uh, you can definitely do some pretty cool cuts like in box cutter and to some extent, you know, like the, the you just don't need to deal with so much uh, crap about filleting, you know. Looks pretty good, you know. It's interesting, weird. Um, you know, it's still NURBS. There are limits to what you can do. Like, I can't expand that anymore. But I can take the whole object and scale it. I don't know. Um, so, the I showed this in a in a different video, but there's a there's a spiral gizmo, um, which has distance, angle, and radius, um, and uh, there's a chamfer gizmo. Uh, so, for example, by default, this is fillet, right? But if we hit chamfer, oh, I forget the key binding, shift C, um, we can make a chamfer and adjust the angle of it. Um, there's actually several ways of doing chamfer, and this is uh, just one. But, uh, but yeah, that's a quick look at that. Um, I guess another thing I should show is fillet. Um, fillet has a beginning and end feature. So for example, if I make this fillet and I set the beginning length to one, and set the end length to one, what happens? Ah, there we are. Um, I need to make this clear. But fillet allows you to make these like partial fillets. Um, Okay, and the final thing I wanted to share is uh, is just some Boolean details. So uh, if you make uh, a planar curve, you can cut uh, volumes with it. In this case, you can see how that works. Um, and uh, the final thing I wanted to show, I guess, is mass boolean. Um, mass boolean is not anything particularly special. It's just uh, a, you can do efficiently multiple booleans at once, um, which is usually useful when you want to union a bunch of things together. But for example, if you select an object and you select two cutting tools, and then you do a boolean difference, you can do like a mass union all at once. Um, and uh, 
that's basically it. Um, uh, yeah, that's it for today. I mean, more features will come over the next few weeks, and it's still very rough, but I'm hoping to have to be able to release an alpha maybe by October 1st. I don't know. I think that seems optimistic, but reasonable. We'll see. All right, cool. Thanks.